Not all disasters are alike. They can be viewed on a spectrum, from the simplest accident to a major disaster. Most of these emergencies don't need to be managed. They're handled by police officers, firefighters, EMTs, and other responders as routine matters. So what happens when really bad emergencies need more capability than the individual agencies can provide? That's where emergency managers come in to coordinate all the agencies. And the bigger the scope of the incident, the more an emergency manager's value increases. Let's show this with a worst case example. The largest of all disasters in terms of scale, complexity, and consequences is a nuclear strike. This is the mother of all disasters. Imagine some bad guys get a hold of 140 pounds of highly enriched uranium and figure out how to cobble together a working bomb, an improvised nuclear device. They get it into place and set it off. The result is confusion, fear, and chaos. Think of our society as a complex Rubik's Cube, interdependent systems that have developed over time to sustain our way of life. A nuclear attack severs our connections to the rest of society. Fear and anxiety would take over as the rhythm of our daily life is destroyed. So if that's the emergency, when does the management come in? Management is what emergency managers do to create order from that chaos. Our job is to squeeze the timeline so we bring back order faster. The hard part is how. So let's take a look at the way emergency managers work. First, we get a few emergency managers together, in the field or in a room, and start working. We find the facts and tell the story. We tell who's in charge, what's happening, is it getting worse or getting better, and what are we doing and what needs to be done. We start to re-establish the connections severed by the blast. In the Emergency Operations Center, we begin to connect people and organizations to the city and to each other. We tell them to connect inside and outside their own organizations with the same message. This is what is happening, and what do you see to inform this picture? By doing this, we're creating a new organization, one that didn't exist before and will never exist again. Imagine this incident organization as a pyramid with three distinct levels. At the top is the strategic level, with agency executives, local, state, federal, and elected officials, where political objectives are translated into strategy. At the bottom of the pyramid is the biggest and most important level, the tactical level, or the people who we call the boots on the ground. And in the middle is where strategy is translated into effective action, where what we need to get done becomes the how we'll do it. We call this the operational level, and this is where the emergency managers sit. Their job is to support everybody, and they do it by managing information, telling everybody everything, managing resources, getting the right stuff to the right place at the right time, and managing consequences, finding and solving problems. But even if you were doing all that, you're still not done. You must tell everyone everything that you're doing all the time. It's critical for the leadership to know the facts so they can convey it to the public. This connection creates trust with the impacted population, and without it, credibility is lost, and our work won't matter. Some experts in government and academia believe that disaster response consists of leadership and the field, and that there's no need for the emergency managers. But the fact is, emergency managers create the incident organization that can manage the catastrophe. Only then can we turn our corner fast enough where order is not yet restored, but the sense of order is palpable. The problem is that during a catastrophe, the only thing that doesn't grow quickly enough is the number of emergency managers at the operations level. We simply can't get big enough fast enough. Keep in your mind this image of a catastrophic incident versus a tiny brake pad. Is this going to be able to manage this job? We have to be able to build this brake pad really big enough, fast enough, so we can create this incident organization and use it as the initiating mechanism for order, the starting point, back to that Rubik's Cube of complexity.